Each day was in the wrong car. Part 2. It's I, Wacky Admir, what if? And I hope you all enjoy this. Okay. So it's the next day, and he's still thinking back on his previous day at Go High. And he doesn't really think too much of it, except for this one, well, girl with white hair that he saw. But he doesn't really know the feeling that he's giving off about her. His heart seems to tense, but he doesn't understand it. So he just gets up out of bed, goes down the stairs, ignores his crackhead mother, who has already has a needle in her actual in her wrist and an injection and is injecting some fluid into her. But he's just ignoring her. He's just making some food, putting into a bento, and walking out the door. Until his mother looks at him with pure fury for no reason. And Issa knows it's going to be another one of those days. His mom pulls out a beer that she was drinking, pulls out the bottle, and throws it at Issa before he leaves. It hits the back of his head, and shards just go straight into his head. Little shards. And Issa just merely pulls them out. He goes over to get the bandages and starts bandaging it up. And he goes to school afterwards, after a few hours, because as she didn't finish there, she beat on him for a while, but Issa didn't do anything, because Issa knew if he did something, she'd probably be dead, because he noticed his strength isn't exactly normal, as people would call it. So Issei just merely ha- had an emotion in his face and just let it happen. He didn't want to kill her. Because then, under the laws that he read, he'd have to go to some place called jail. Which he did not want to go to. Although he could probably escape, but he'd be a wanted person. So he just left. And as soon as he left after the two hours, he walked to school to go high. He was late. And Sonia was about to close the actual gate. But Sonia saw Issei. And Sonia said, Hey, kid. Why? Hey, dude, why are you late? So late. You're late by two hours. I'm going to have to close the gate. Yeah, you're going to have to get like a tardy slip or something. Or. Well, something similar to that. And he just looked at her with an emotionless face and just said, with a mon- monotone voice, just like every time, just says, Well, I had family issues. So I guess I'll have to go to the principal's office. And he merely just walked past her while she was closing the gate. She's like, Wait, let me open the gate for you. And he just walked past the gate and he just broke the gate. By him just walking past her. Like he just walk through it like the Kool-Aid man. And she was astonished and she's wondering what the hell this guy is. Because no one can walk past a fucking pure metal gate. Like just walk into it and then break in front of him. No, no, no. This man has to be something. So she starts watching him the entire day with binoculars and everything. Issei, who's just walking up towards his classroom, well, his aura starts flaring, and he doesn't really notice it because he can't really sense his own aura right now. It starts flaring, and Sonia, who is currently watching him, threw a ball in her club room, and the ball shatters, and she coughs up blood, and she's on the ground, kneeling, just from the fear pressure of this boy. And Issei is none the wiser. He just walks into his classroom goes to his seat, sits down, and he feels a nudge on nudge on his shoulder. And he looks behind him and he sees Konako staring at him with some worry. Because with Konako's sharpened senses, 
she can smell some blood on him. And she asks, what, what happened? Are you okay? And Ethan says, no, I'm perfectly fine. And she looks at him and says, don't, don't lie to me. And he just says, but I'm fine. And she just merely looks at him with eyes that just say, I, I know, I know that you're not. And he says, monotone voice and his completely emotionless face. Well, when he was talking to her, she could somehow tell that he wasn't fine at all on the inside. And while they're talking, the teacher is ignoring them because, well, Issei, ever since he's appeared, has gotten straight A's and hasn't really messed up a single thing. Like, whether it be any of the tests, whether it be mannerism, whether it be respect, he hasn't messed up in a single sense, so just lets it go on. And Konako, well, the teacher's a lolicon, so yeah. And this kind of just made Koniko tense up to the teacher. This is why uh, Koniko does not like the teacher there. And the teacher's giving Koniko like a dirty look, and Issei is just killing intent. Just shoots up towards the classroom, everyone starts getting on the ground, kneeling. Teacher's vomiting up blood. His eyes are bleeding. His actual ears are starting to bleed. And even his ass is starting to bleed. All because of the sheer killing intent of Issei. And Issei's not even mean, meaning to really use the aura. Because he thinks that his killing intent isn't doesn't have anything to do with an aura or magic or Riatsu, is what you would call it. He doesn't know it's Riatsu or ma or what they would think it's magic. But Konako just taps him on the shoulder and hugs him. And the aura stops. And the teacher who was giving dirty looks before gives a look of pure fear towards Issei. And just starts teaching again, trying not to incur Issei's wrath. And Issei just, as soon as the bell rings, he gets his two lunchboxes and he walks all the way up, up towards the roof and Konika follows him. After getting her, after about to get her lunch, but Issei said, I already got you a bento. Do you want to eat lunch with me? And she followed him. And once he got up, got up the stairs, went up to the went up to the roof. Issei gave gave her a lunch box. And once she opened it, there was this golden glow. There was this steaming rice with special sauce on it, teriyaki, barbecue, and Mongolian sauce with some bourbon and it tasted divine to her when she started eating it and there's also the octopus balls with barbecue and teriyaki all over it and they were pretty well done the best of all though was the sweets that were in there there was dango there was pudding there was jello and she was eating it, and she had the most adorable face. And Issei actually looked at her face and slightly smiled. And Konako almost caught the smile, but it turned back to the emotionless face. And Issei in his mind was like, hmm, what was that? I felt my face facial expression change. It was probably nothing. And he also ends up thinking about why his heart skipped a beat again. But she's just knocking that off. He's like, I, I don't really care. So they're hanging out, they're talking, they're eating, and Issei's just uh, asking Konako, so the ORC thing before, should I go ahead and go there? And Konako just says, yeah, follow me. And she drags Issei to the ORC, which when he's walking down the hallways, he's talking to Konako, and she ends up blushing and fidgeting because Issei ended up saying that she looked very pretty. Even though Issei said this instinctively, 
not really thinking of it. And she just lightly punched him in the side. Which would usually hurt someone, but it doesn't hurt Issei at all. So the light punch would be about the punch that she does with Freed. Which she punches Freed. That's what the so-called light punch would have been. She didn't really control her strength. But it didn't really affect Issei. Which shocked her. So he walked into the ORC with Koniko. And she, he could hear a shower. Someone exiting the shower. And he saw this one girl in her, in his head, well, that had luscious curves, a quite well endowed breast and rear end, and Issei just didn't really like this, because he didn't know where to look at exactly, and Issei didn't really care for that, so he merely just took off his Kohai jacket and threw it over Rias. And said, go ahead and put on some clothes. I'm not into that. And this shocked Rias. Because Rias was trying to use seduction to get him into her garage. And Issei just merely looked, ar looked around and saw Akino giggling at what Issei just did. And Rias was kind of furious that her seduction didn't work. And Kiba was blushing and looking away. And... Issei just was wondering, hmm, this, this might be interesting, maybe I should join, I'd be able to spend time with this girl with white hair, Konako. And Issei just looks at Konako very intently, who just sat on the couch, and she starts looking away, and her cheeks turn red. She's blushing, but Issei doesn't really know what a blush means, really. When someone blushes usually means they're either embarrassed or they usually like you. But Issei doesn't know what the hell a blush is. He's never blushed himself, so... Eh. He thinks it's some kind of sickness, so he goes up towards Koniko, puts his hand on her forehead, and said, Your face is red. Are you feeling okay? And Koniko just starts having steam kind of out of her, and her eyes start to change a little. And you could see a little heart forming into the pupil of her eyes, which Issei sees as weird. But he just gets closer and decides to try to go get an ice pack. So Issei just quickly goes into the ORC, goes deeper into the ORC room, go, goes to the fridge, grabs an ice pack, and puts it on Koniko's head. And yeah, Akino, Rias, and Kiba look at this and start fucking laughing, like just laughing because how oblivious Issei is to the situation, and just how fucking hilarious it is seeing Konika like that, so defenseless, and just so hilarious because she's so flustered right now, but one person can't tell from common sense, and Issei just looks at the club, pres club president, Arias, and says, I prefer not to really join your club. Well, if it means that I can spend time with Konako, then maybe, then sure. And Ray says, oh, that's delightful, but you, I have a question for you. Do you believe in the supernatural? And he says, yes, I do. And she's like, well, the super, wait, what? And he says, I do because, well, I sensed the presence of a fallen angel before, and I sense that you guys are not human. I think you guys are what I assume would be devils. He says this with a curious tone of voice, but still monotone, where no one can really hear the tone of voice except for Koniko, and she could tell he's curious. So Rias and them pull out their actual wings, and Issei has no shocked expression, but his monotone voice is like, oh, so, you guys have double wings. Hmm. Interesting. He just looks at them with his normal face. Reese is dumb shocked. So is Kiba, and Akio is just curious about this newcomer. How he's not shocked about this. And Issei just says, hmm. As soon as the bell rings, she's like, it looks like it's time to go home. I think I'll see you guys later. And he just opens the door, walks out, 
And Reese is still dumbfounded by the fact he's not surprised about angels, fallen angels, or devils, because she told the whole story and he just had a monotone face, no expression, expressional change at all. Issei just walked out. And he started walking home, but he went across a park. And he couldn't help but look at the fountain, because it was so clear. And to him, it looked very relatively nice. Though his expression never changed, but and on the inside, he thought it was a beautiful scenery. And all of a sudden, he feels a killing intent. And he dodges to the right, and all of a sudden, the spear of light pierces straight in front of him. And it just, it does an explosion towards the ground. And Issei looks behind him, and he sees this fallen angel, which is known as Rainier. And he just looks at her and just says, Excuse me, but did you drop that? And he points towards the, towards the light spear. She face palms herself and says, No, I'm trying to kill you. And she throws a thousand separate fucking light spears, and all Issei does is just dodge to the left, dodge to the right. And he just dodges all of them. Until, all of a sudden, Kokoville himself appears. And he looks at Rainier and says, Why is it taking so long? And he throws a few, a few light spears himself, and Rainier also does. And they fuse into a giant light spear. And all that Issei does is he just tries to dodge, but it pierces him still. It pierces him in the arm, making it to where his arm's blown off. And Issei doesn't scream at all. He just looks at them with his normal blank face. On the inside, he's not really panicking either. He's like, if I die, I die. And then they both look at him, and they're like, oh my god, it's an edge lord. I think he actually wants to die. Let's go ahead and fulfill his wish. And they start throwing tons and tons of light spears. Issei is dodging as many as he can, but some hit him in the knee, kneecaps, and one hits him right in the chest, thus killing him. And Kokoville rushes towards him, grabs him by the head, throws him in the air, just because he's annoyed how he was able to dodge a human, was able to dodge all the punishment he was dealing on him. And once he threw him in the air, he threw 50 different light spears, and they all pierced him in the chest, until it caused a giant hole to appear in his heart. And Issei felt something inside of himself, trying to be released. And he fell to the ground, and you couldn't hear a splatter or anything, which Kokoville find found weird. And then, when he looked at Issei, he saw that there was this white-haired girl that Kogaville knew was from the ORC club because he, he did certain information gathering. And he looked at her and said, you guys were already trying to get this boy on your side. He may have a powerful aura, but now he's dead. And Koniko looked at him with tears and started rushing towards him, and tried to punch him, but all of a sudden, Kokoville just dodged, grabs her wrist, breaks it, and Issei, before his consciousness is going out, can hear Koniko screaming, and in a, his entire being is saying to help her, and he doesn't understand why, but he doesn't care, because he's wanting to help, help her just as well. And then this power burst out from him. This dark red energy, this dark red and black energy, power bursts out of him. And Tokoville starts getting launched back from just the energy. Koniko is still standing because none of it's directed towards her. Rainier flies all the way out of the fountain, out of the, out of the direction of the fountain, and flies 700 meters back. And Issei merely stands up. The heart. The hole where his heart is forms, where his chest is. And Issei has this mask on the corner of his head that resembles a dragon. But it also resembles an oni. And there's a horn from one side popping out. And he has this coat right here on him. And he has this 
bladed weapon on his side, which he unsheathes. And once he unsheathes it, Gokavale looks at him and says, You brat, you can't defeat I, the great Koka. And right when he said this, he notices that Issei is right behind him. And then he looks at his hands because he felt a sharp pain. And both of his hands come flying off. So does his legs. And he's screaming in pain. And all of a sudden, Issei is about to do the finishing blow towards his head. But then he notices that this guy has just grabbed Konako. This guy came out of nowhere, jumped down and grabbed Konako and started leaving. And Issei, instead of finishing off, Konakobiel started rushing after him. And he was running very quickly. He was running towards the forest at high top speeds, almost trying to break the sound barrier. And Issei merely just does one step and unconsciously does... A certain technique that a wrong cars use, Sato. He ends up, uh, ends up appearing right in front of the stranger and slashes directly at him. But the stranger himself pulls out his blade and they start to clash. Wind pressure, shock, shock waves are everywhere. And Issei kicks the guy in the gut, making him drop Konako. He flies back a few meters. And then all of a sudden, Issei feels a sharp pain in his gut, and he starts coughing out blood. But he wonders why. And the guy says, You don't know what my sacred gear is, do you? Your sacred gear seems powerful, but mine can reflect any damage I take. Meaning, I'm invincible. And Issei just looks at him and is like, What's a sacred gear? He just says it out loud. And he's like, how do you not know what a secret gear is when you have one? And Issei says, Uh, I don't think this is a thing that you call a sacred gear. And he picks up Konako, puts Konako on his back, and Konako's confused about what Issei means. And Issei merely flash steps and decapitates the man. But then he feels a sharp pain in his head. He feels like his head's trying to slide off. But all the actual veins that connect his head together starts to sew itself together. It starts forcing the head back on. And Konko saw it was about to slide off, but it was forced back on by his regeneration. The muscle fibers in the neck were forcing it back on. And Issei just looked at Konko and said, Hmm, I'm glad that you're okay. And he says it in a soft tone. And his face shows an expression of pure joy. That he was able to save Konako, which Issei couldn't understand at the moment. But Konako merely just hugged him and kissed him on the cheek, which Issei felt that his face was getting a little hot, and he said, I might be sick. I don't understand why my face feels very hot right now. And why the color of my face is completely red when he runs over to the fountain, just to check how his actual condition is. And Konako merely laughs at this, because he doesn't know where the blush is, nor does he know anything about his own feelings. But Konako finds this quite funny. So Issei goes to his house with Konako, and right when he's about to step in, I stop the, I stop the what-if here. I hope you guys enjoy this what-if. And, well, I did try a, a really hard for this. I might not be able to post a second video today, because I'm kind of going to be really busy tomorrow. So I hope you guys can understand. I'll try to, but if I don't, then please don't hold it against me. And. Uh